This is the third in a series of videos designed to teach the basics of CSS. If you are new to CSS and have not yet watched the first two videos in this series, then you might want to go back and watch those videos before watching this one. This video will talk about the CSS box model. I'll start by going to littlewebhut.com and I'll click on the CSS tab. On the left side of the page is a box model link, so I'm going to click on that. To control the layout of an HTML document, it is important to understand that the HTML elements, which are part of the visual layout, are contained in rectangular boxes. This diagram shows the parts of the rectangular box. If, for example, you have an image that you have specified with an image tag, the image occupies this content area right here. Surrounding the image is a padding area right here, and a border, and a margin. There are CSS properties for controlling the width of the padding area, the width and style of the border, and the width of the margin. The width of the padding, border, and margin can be set to zero if you like. CSS also has properties for controlling the background within the box. The background can simply be a color that you select, or it can be an image. In either case, the background is displayed in the padding area behind the content. If the content is text, then the background would be visible behind the text within this content area as well. Let's look at an example. I'm going to click on the padding link on the left side of the page here. And next I'll click on the test button for the first example that's here. I'm going to delete the first H1 and P element here because they're not needed for this discussion. I'll start now by pressing the view button. What we have here are two elements that are displayed. The first element is this H2 element that we have specified here, and this is the text for it. And the second is an image tag here that we've used to display an image. We'll notice up here that the H2 element has a class attribute set to a value of TST1, and the image has a class value set to that same value of TST1. Therefore, this style that we have up here which uses a TST1 class name, will apply to both this H2 and image elements. Here we can see that we have used the padding property to set the padding to 40 pixels. And that's this area that surrounds this text right here. And it's also this area that surrounds the image right here. We can also see that we've used the background color property to set the background to orange. And we can see that this orange background color is visible in the padding area as well as behind the text within this H2 element. And down here we can see that the background color is only visible in the padding area because the image occupies the entire content area. You will also notice that there is currently no border that is visible for either one of these elements. But as can be seen from this white space right here, there is a margin that is separating these two boxes. So let's set the margin property to zero and see what happens. So I'll go up here after the semicolon and I'll type in margin and I'll set the value to zero. Now when I press the view button, you'll see that these two boxes now touch each other. Now let's go up here and add a border property. So I'm gonna type a semicolon followed by border and I'm going to use a value of thick, solid, and red. And now this is what it looks like with a border. Now let's go up here and reduce the padding width to zero. So I'll just get rid of this four here. Now you can see that there is no padding visible between the content area and the border. I'm going to go back up here and restore the padding area 
and I'm also going to add a width to the margin. So I'll set that to five pixels. And we'll take a quick look at this. And now I'm going to change the background from a simple color to an image. So I'm going to change the background color property to a background image property. So let me delete this color orange here and I'll change the word color to image. And now I need to specify the path to an image. And I do that by typing URL with the path name contained between parentheses. And I'm also going to put the path name between a pair of quotation marks. And now I can type the path and the file name. Now I'll press the view button to see what that looks like. And here you can see that the orange background has been replaced with the image that I specified. If we go back to our previous page, you can see here on the left that we have properties for specifying the background and a bunch of properties here for specifying border. And we also have properties down here for setting the margin and the padding. And you can click on any of these links for more information. You'll also find plenty of examples. Well, that concludes this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment.